The fine line between politicians and public servants. I'm Brian Lilly with the Rebel.media. I've been saying for a long time that public servants should be public servants. That means that they should be quiet on issues of policy. They shouldn't be out campaigning on the issues. Their job is quite often to enforce the laws or uh, apply the laws. Their job is to carry out programs passed by our duly elected officials, be they government or otherwise. It's why I had a big problem with Toronto Police Chief Bill Blair and his campaigning to keep the long gun registry. I also had a similar problem with Calgary Police Chief Rick Hansen, who campaigned against the long, long gun registry and didn't like it. Now, quite frankly, I didn't want to hear from either one of them while they were police chiefs. They've both since done the right thing. They've retired and run for office. Blair is going to run for the Liberals in the next election. And, well, Hanson, he ran for the Alberta Progressive Conservatives in the last provincial election. Didn't turn out so well for him there. But at least they did the right thing eventually. But while they were public servants, they shouldn't have been campaigning. They shouldn't have been politicking. Which brings me to the issue of Ontario's ombudsman, Andre Moran. This is a man who's been quite hard on the Kathleen Wynne government. So, hey, I should be in favor of him, right? He's putting the boots to Kathleen Wynne. I, I love that, right? Well, yes and no. His job as ombudsman is to investigate complaints against the government. And when he does his job and he does it well, that's all well and good. But too often there's a, well, there's an unseemly side to how Moran carries out his job. And that includes attempting to use a political campaign to keep his job. His term was set to expire this Friday, and what did he do? He went on Twitter to try and coax the public into getting him reappointed. He got that partially. He had a four-month extension of his mandate until they can review job applications from others. But he's been on the job for 10 years. It's probably time for somebody else. But let me read you some of his tweets. He went on Twitter on Wednesday night and said, not to appear precipitous or anything, but after 10 plus years on the job, was told I'd be reappointed temporarily for at least four months when my term expired. My term expires on Friday, May 29th, 2015. No news. Yep, in less than 48 hours, you have no ombudsman. Time to make your voice heard. Unfortunately, it's come to this. Make some noise, please. Well, that caused a Twitter firestorm with people retweeting and, 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 you know, loudly proclaiming their support for Andre Moran. It was people on the left, people on the right, people of all political stripes. But there were also those saying, hold on a minute. This isn't up to you. You serve at the pleasure of the government. This is not how this is supposed to go. Andre Moran was blurring the lines. He's long blurred the lines in many ways over his appointments, both as the military ombudsman as, and as Ontario's ombudsman. Quite frankly, if you want to politic, if you want to campaign for a job, you should be doing that when the writ is dropped. You shouldn't be doing that as a public servant. As I said, this is a man that has taken the boots to Kathleen Wynne and her government several times, including a recent report on Ontario Hydro and how, or Hydro One and how they have not looked after the public's interest, how their system has screwed ratepayers. It has left people with huge bills. It has left customer service by the wayside. I should be applauding this man, and in some ways I do. But in other ways, this is a man who doesn't know where to draw the line. Andre, if you want to be an elected official, resign and campaign. If you want to politic, resign and campaign. But don't do it while you're a public servant. And that applies to all of them.